Hong Kong's financial heavyweight status is undeniable, but some international brokers say they are facing prejudicial treatment at the hands of the Chinese government. Bernard Pulio is chairman of Quam Limited, a financial services group based in Hong Kong. This prejudicial treatment you say that you're facing right now, tell me how much does it undermine your curb appeal to potential investors? Under the scheme, as we know, the Hong Kong Shanghai Connect, Shanghai Hong Kong Connect, we as Hong Kong brokers can now permit investors to buy A shares in the, in the renminbi denominated shares in Shanghai from Hong Kong, as a normal broker would have. And there is a limit of, of total amount available. But where is really the crux of the discussion right now is the fact that Chinese brokers, whether it's Haitong Securities, Galaxy, all the large securities houses, and even the smaller one in China, they can open in Hong Kong, start up an operation in Hong Kong, and therefore be in a position to control the trade by both the Hong Kong-Shanghai and the Shanghai-Hong Kong trade. And what does that give them as an advantage is the client that they had in, Hong, in Shanghai suddenly moves his account with the same broker into Hong Kong, and therefore they can do an offset into their positions on margin financing whatsoever. Now, what do you say to someone who argues, look, you're just lucky to be able to operate as a foreign entity in China? We cannot even do it. We cannot have license to do that. Foreign entities cannot operate as securities house in China. So let's get real for a minute. What do you think is really happening? There seems to be sort of this nationalistic tinge to the conversation we're having today. They're trying to create national champions. And these national champions, well, I guess the Chinese government is afraid of, of opening the market to the foreigners, the big name of the world, and even Quam is a big name, although it doesn't sound like a big name, but they're afraid of opening that market. They feel that their financial companies are too vulnerable to competition. So I think that's really what's happening. It's really protectionist. I think the CEPA agreement we have between Hong Kong and China is unfair for the Hong Kong brokers. I think we should be able to open in China and being able to deal in securities trading as the Chinese brokers can do in Hong Kong. And right now, uh, the market share of the brokerage in Hong Kong is now being picked up a lot by the Chinese brokers simply because they offer that advantage of both markets and they can move their Chinese client into the Hong Kong market and, and do a sort of offsetting type of situation between the position in Hong Kong and in Shanghai. So you've been screaming this message from the rooftops, but who's really been listening? You're the one listening. Unfortunately, it's so strange. All my colleagues in the industry agree totally with me, but nobody's listening. Whether it's SFC, government, financial services, we did represent it, nobody's listening. Or they listen and they don't dare. And often it's a problem with Hong Kong now, nowadays. Hong Kong doesn't dare talking. And it is very frustrating. And we're not asking for the moon. We're asking simply to be treated on an equal footing with, with the Chinese brokers. Now, if the Chinese government says no to what you're calling for today, are you willing to relocate? No, there's no reason to relocate. I'm just just passing a message to the authorities because after all, I'm based in Hong Kong. We've got 400 employees. We've got 100 employees in China, but in China, they're mostly a representative office, marketing office, but we cannot trade on the local market. Right, and there's another narrative that runs through this whole conversation, and that is the ambition of the Chinese government to internationalize the renminbi. The majority of RMB reserves, of course, lie with national banks. So how does this reality impact you as a foreign entity? It's another good point you just raised right now. Who provides the RMB is got to be the Chinese banks. And the Chinese banks are Hong Kong. So again, the Chinese banks again are an advantage to the local banks, although HSBC has got a fair amount of RMB, perhaps Hang Seng Bank, Bank of East Asia. But nevertheless, the one who's, who's swimming into RMB has got to be Chinese banks, correct or not? So therefore, me as a broker, as any other broker, one way to have to permit my clients to have access to RMB, I've got to have access to RMB lines. And therefore, I've got to deal with the Chinese bank. So again, it funnels the business into the Chinese bank. Okay, but let's get really honest for a second here. You have decades of experience locally. You've got a very long list of clientele. You could take your business and move it elsewhere to one of the other emerging markets in Asia. So what's keeping you? What should we do elsewhere in the region? Well, it's a bit difficult. You know, the rest of the region is not big market. Singapore is dwindling in terms of market. They're getting much bigger into uh, futures market than in actual equity market. Also Singapore, as you know, Indonesia doesn't want to give its business to Singapore. Malaysia doesn't want to give its business to Singapore. Neither is Thailand. So there's all these nationalistic differentials. If I go to Singapore, there's no room for me. 
I, I, I've been in Hong Kong, I've got a client base in Hong Kong. Start all over again, elsewhere in a smaller market? Well, I better fight in that market where I am now and voice what I think. And you know, we're supposed to be a democracy in Hong Kong. So why not talk about it? <laughs>